going to be a quick introductory video to the Pinstrument, a, um, um, a set of modules, uh, synthesizer modules I wrote to work on a Raspberry Pi on a very small screen. You can see here I've got it uh, mounted into a Eurorack uh, connected to the Expert Sleeper's ES8. This is an audio interface, USB audio interface. Um, it has four inputs and eight outputs, and they're all DC coupled, which means that you can use them with your Eurorack signals, um, and it'll it'll translate them into something that Pure Data can use. In fact, Pure Data sees them as as values between negative one and positive one, um, but you can think about them sort of like negative ten to positive ten volts. Um, so this is a this is an Adafruit uh, hat, the 2.8 inch 320 by 240 TFT with capacitive touch. So I've designed this interface to work on this screen, which if you run this on any computer, you know, any computer you want to that has a screen, right, it's going to fit, right, no matter what, because this is pretty much, this is one of the smallest screens you can get. Um, you can happily run it on a 1080p screen. If you'd like. But I wanted to design this so that it could be something I could integrate into a Eurorack setup and I wouldn't have the distraction of web browsers and emails and all the other junk you get when you're trying to run your your computer with your like fun time, right? Um, so the basic interface that I've got here is we've got a menu selector here with up and down so we can scroll through all the different modules that are available to us. And then each module displays, when it's selected, displays its controls here. And it's just a little creative PD programming. If you like using Pure Data and you've never done that before, you can uh, download this package at my GitHub for uh, Pinstrument. That's P-I instrument, right? Um, and you can take a look and see how I do that. Um, I'm just going to start off with the clocks module. I'm going to maybe kind of give you a glimpse of some of the other modules, but you can find descriptions of all of them in the readme file on the GitHub project. So let's take a look at clocks first, because if you're using modular synthesizers, a clock is, is often a thing you'll start with because you want to synchronize everything in time. And I haven't been doing a lot of that, and I don't have a clock module in my system, so I decided I'd build one just to see how it might change my workflow. So it's really nice. You can set a tempo and beats per minute. I've got a little slider for that. You can turn it on and off. You can see when I turn it on, it starts flashing. It's got four clock channels. You can see they're all flashing at 160 beats per minute. Now the way all of these modules are set up, green, uh, um, green things are things that you can interact with to control that module. Gray are inputs. They take signals into them, whether that's an audio signal um, that's positive and negative, or just a control signal that's positive. It's going to take take those... Oh, sorry, not gray. Blue. Blue is an input. Blue is an input. So if we wanted to modulate the tempo, we could. I might do that in a second. But the gray is an output, and you can see every one of these channels has an output. Um, if you assign it to a number, it's going to send it to the audio output, in this case on my expert sleepers, if you're just using it on a computer with two channels, then one and two are going to do something and none of the other uh, numbered channels will do anything. You can hear we're getting just a pulse, right? Which is, you know, it's something we can use to trigger things. I can trigger an um, envelope generator with it if I want to, right? Um, all right, I'm going to turn that off for a second. Actually, if you move it on up, into the letters, then you can do internal routing. So there's a special patch in this in this in the mother patch, right? Um, that helps to route all these signals around. So if you set this to A, any blue channel that you that you that you assign to A will then receive this clock, right? Um, now clocks are clocks are something you want to like have a relationship, some kind of tempo relationship, right? Um, we can create patterns. So if if this clock is a is a quarter note, you know it's one over one, one beat, right? We can set another clock that is, let's say, triplets, right? You can see now these X's as they flash. The top X is our is our normal tempo, our our beat, right? And the pulse, the second, is this one which is now going at triplets. And then we can maybe assign the next one 
Oops, I just uh, moved the wrong thing. I'm going to set this one to four. So every four beats, this one's going to click. Let's see if I can get it right. All right, there we go. Now we've got a, a tick every four beats for this channel. And you'll notice, I borrowed an idea from Pamela's new workout. We can take a pulse out, or we can take um, a sine wave out. We could assign this to a sine wave and use that to control things. In fact, we've got a sine wave, we've got a triangle wave, we've got a um, pul uh, sawtooth, and we've got a square wave. I've made all four of those available. Um, yeah, this is not as uh, fully featured as Pamela's new workout, but it, it still allows you to play around with, um, with clocks. All right, I'm gonna show that you don't necessarily need to use your modular setup at all to make sound with this. You can, uh, I've got some uh, oscillators that we could control, quad, quad cosines. It just puts out four, four different cosine waves that can all be frequency controlled. Um, I've also got some drums. So if I want to have a kick drum, I can go here and assign the kick drum to listen on A. It's going to listen to this clock, right? Every four pulses. And I'm going to send the output to one. And I've already got one from Expert Sleepers patched over to my audio output over here. Actually, there's a little mixer I built, so they're being mixed. All right, there's a bass drum. I can assign the triplets to maybe B, and then have the snare listen to B. Let's get that assigned right. You'll notice it's a little noisy when you're changing things. Uh, normally you'd want to just set it up and let it run. We can also have make patterns, so if we don't want this to pulse every time, you know, we can leave leave some of them out. All right, then we, we can end up with some pretty interesting rhythms this way. All right, I'm gonna stop, stop those. Actually, I'll just turn these off so they're not actually listening anymore. Um, yeah, so let, let me just go through a few more of these objects. I don't want this video to go on for like 15 minutes, so I just wanna kind of give you a little overview here. So this is a clock object, we got drums, we've got a pitch tracker, which I'm, I haven't tested out much yet, but it's designed to take three channels in, you can get three different signals into it. You can quantize these channels to equal tempered tuning if you like. You can also set a uh, portamento value up to up to almost a second between uh, one pitch and the next. Um, it's got three outputs. The first is discrete pitch. Whenever, um, whenever a strong pitch is detected, it outputs that pitch. It's got a continuous pitch, so if you like all the wobbles in your signal, you know, you can use continuous pitch and it'll just keep outputting whatever the pitch is that's currently being played. And then there's envelope, so you can report what the current envelope, what the current amplitude is. And all of these, ob all these gray objects output in that same range. In PD, it's zero, or it's negative one to positive one technically. In the expert sleepers, you know, it's going up to Eurorack voltages. Um, there's also a readout at the bottom for the pitch that's coming in. I don't currently have anything hooked up to demonstrate that, and that would make this video long. So I'm just going to move through a few more of these. Rulabi waves involves um, several um, sine wave generators um, that are in a loop. They're influencing each other's frequency, which creates a chaotic oscillation. Um, so for the outputs, you get the frequency modulation of, of A. I don't know if I can get this up into audio range, maybe. I don't really normally run it up that high, but we can do that. So if I, there we go. We can hear it being influenced by the fourth oscillator's speed. All right. Now we can also get um, frequency modulation and amplitude modulation. So th this this is influencing this 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 oscillator is influencing this oscillator's frequency and amplitude by about 20% or something like that. And then we've got an, a gate. So if you want to just send out pulses, like uh, it's high if 
the top oscillator is greater than the bottom or it's um, it's low if it's less than so they're comparators you can use these as chaotic clocks instead of the clock module if you like uh, they, they also have a phase reset so you can send a pulse pulse to the that oscillator to cause it to start over which can be useful for creating interesting uh, rhythmic textures that repeat themselves even while the chaotic oscillator is trying to move uh, we've got a Turing machine I really like the Turing machine I already assigned this to B. So let me go back up to the clock. Uh, 